Um, I just want to take a second to welcome everybody into today's session and the kickoff of cohort number 11 for R for Data Science uh, of the Data Science Learning Community. I want to take a second to welcome you. Uh, my name is Colin Berkey. I am a, uh, I work at a public media station in Nebraska, and I am a media research analyst who's been using R for several years now. I've also been a part of the data science learning community for, I think, roughly about five years. I'd have to go back and see how far back ago that was. Um, but I will be leading, or at least I've committed to the first eight weeks of leading this cohort through R for DS. Before I kind of go over what the book club is and how it's going to run and kind of do some of the more admin -y stuff on our first session, I just want to take a second to kind of get to know everybody here, if, if at all possible. And it's exciting to see that we have about 20 participants. So I don't know if it would be worth our time in the hour to fully go over everybody and introduce everybody. So I think just for the sake of time, um, let's in the chat, if you wouldn't mind just saying hello, where you're coming from. And then also maybe kind of give a little sense of how 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 uh, how much you've been using R, and then um, maybe one last thing, kind of say what are you excited about? What's something that you're excited about for this cohort? And again, I do want to give space for people to jump in, but seeing that there's 20 individuals, I think it wouldn't be worth our time to go each person to introduce themselves. So let's just use the chat um, to kind of introduce each other. So uh, if you wouldn't mind, and uh, your name where you're coming from if you're comfortable with it if not that's fine you could just share maybe your um time zone how long have you been using r and what are you excited about uh for joining in this book club and i'll kind of just call a couple of people out and just kind of introduce them as they kind of roll into the chat here it looks like we have uh dewey um master student from notre dame that's excellent excited to join the community See if anybody else wants to join in and share in the chat here where they're coming from and who they are. Yeah, I got my camera on, but I uh, I'm usually a fish. So if you see if you see my fish, that's uh, you know that's me. <laughs> excellent, excellent, excellent. Well, it's nice to meet you, Dewey. Yeah. Uh, we got my Angie. Question. She yep, it's Angie. She jumped in. She's uh, calling in from Texas. She's very new to R. She's excited for a great community to learn with. Yes, this is an excellent community. Uh, Daniel's here with us. He's a data curation officer uh, coming from Canada. Awesome. We got Joseph Ritchie coming in from Utah. Excellent to meet you, Ritchie. Austin from Colorado Springs. Now they're really coming in, so I got to keep up here. Uh, let's see. Looks like we have Kelsey. Really excited. Looking for engaging discussions. Excellent. Looks like we have Michaela with us today from California. Uh, looks like we have Tanner from Ogden, Utah, another data analyst, and hopefully most of you are keeping up with these. I, I do wish I could have uh, had a really kind of one-on-one -on -one conversation with each one of you as, as they come in, but we have Esmeralda from Mexico. Um, we have, uh, and I'm sorry, I'm going to mess up this pronunciation here, um, Kanika? If I got that wrong, please correct me. Um, Ryan, data analyst from Salt Lake, been using R for three to four months, doing an internship. That's excellent, awesome. Using using R hopefully in that internship, so on and so forth. So awesome. If I miss anybody, I do apologize, but hopefully you've taken some time to kind of add and introduce yourself into the chat. Um, like I said, when we first started these book clubs or when I first started it, we started with, I think I was in cohort number three and I think we only had like six people. So seeing the growth of this group grow to nearly 20 people is really, really awesome. And it's great to see uh, how this community and this book club has grown. So just to kind of, like I said, I introduced myself a little bit. My name is Colin Berkey. I'm a media research analyst at, um, at a public media station here in Nebraska. I've been using R for several years now. Um, I have done book clubs before. I've participated with them and I've also led book clubs as well. And so uh, I have committed to assisting in facilitating R for data science, cohort number 11, going through chapter, chapter by chapter. 
And today is mostly going to be focused on kind of doing some admin -y stuff, kind of talk about what this book club is, kind of give you a rundown of how this is going to run. So you can kind of get a sense of if this is something that you want to participate in. Uh, hopefully by the end of today, you're like, yeah, this is exactly what I want to do. I want to commit to reading all these chapters. Uh, but if this is not for you, then I also want you to have information to make that decision for yourself. So I'm just going to share my screen here so everybody can, let me see, I want to go to desktop number one, share. Okay. Can everybody see my shared slides? Somebody give me like a thumbs up or chime in, say yes, no. Do I got any thumbs up here? Everybody seeing my slides? Oh, maybe if I open up the chat, somebody's going to say it. Yes. All right. I'm getting some S's. So that's awesome. Great. Awesome. Um, I will try my best to monitor the chat as much as possible. Um, I will say that if you do have something to say, or if you want to, if you want to add um, additional comments, or if you have questions, feel free to jump in at any time. Uh, this is a unstructured conversation and discussion about this material. So um, if you, if I miss something in the chat or you have something that you really, really want to answer or add to, please, please do. Um, this is a, like I said, it's a, it's an open discussion. But first off, I just want to welcome you to the R for Data Science Book Club. This is part of the data science learning community, uh, formerly known as the R for Data Science community. This, the community has changed its name to be more inclusive of all data science and data professionals. And so now it's referred to as data, the data science learning community. You're here, so you're obviously aware of the Slack community, um, but this is here for, um, this specific book club is focused on the R for data science um, book. If you haven't accessed the book yet, you sure can. It's freely online. You can access it open source. Uh, this is the book right here, R for data science. I do want to highlight, make sure that you have access to the second edition, because that is the edition that we will be covering in this book club. I know the first edition is still floating around online. And then also, if you've purchased the book, you know, a couple years ago, you may be reading the first edition. So I just wanted to highlight, make sure that you're reading the second edition while part of this book club. Again, freely online, but if you do want to buy copies, and this is not an endorsement of by any means, you can purchase them on your favorite bookstores. Amazon is a popular place, but again, it's freely online for you to read and access the materials. I do want to quickly mention that part of this group, the data science learning community has a code of conduct. I'm not going to review this code of conduct. I'm going to put it on all of you to review it, read it, understand it, uh, ask questions where applicable. If you do have any questions, you can reach out to uh, myself or John the Geek, who actually is the executive director of the data science learning community. Um, but I don't foresee any issues with that, but just be aware of it, that there is a code of conduct involved with being a part of this group and being a part of this community. So you're in a book meeting, book club meeting. What are these? Really, uh, to kind of boil this down, a book club meeting is a weekly hour block where we will spend time discussing a chapter every week from a specific book. I do want to emphasize that we'll try to get through a chapter every week. Uh, we may not get through all the material. We may only highlight stuff that we find interesting, not interesting, so on and so forth. Um, so uh, I, th I think somebody's unmuted. So if you wouldn't mind muting yourself, that would be great so we can avoid um, background noise. Thank you very much. Um, this is a opportunity for you to participate and volunteer and discuss certain chapters from the book. You will notice that in the pins in the channel, there is a pin called, let's see, it is called the lead the discussion or cohort number 11. That link will take you to a Google sheet that will allow you to edit and put your name into specific, um, specific, uh, chapters that you might be interested in. Right now, you're only seeing eight. Uh, we will expand this further as we commit more to more weeks. Right now, I'm the facilitator uh, committing to the first eight weeks, but our intention is to continue this into all of the chapters. You might have noticed this is a very, very large book. Um, the last time I did this cohort, it took us probably about 35, 36 weeks, which is a significant amount of time. 
And so to kind of break this up, what we've decided to do is break it out into chunks. And so that's why you're only seeing the first eight weeks. But if you want to volunteer to do a chapter, you can access this from the Slack channel. It's pinned up on the top. You just go into this document, put your name in here, and you will be responsible for giving that presentation. Uh, I do want to say that you're not expected to be an expert with that. Um, so if you want to sign up for this material, don't think that you have to be an expert to lead a discussion. And in fact, I encourage non-experts to lead discussions or to lead presentations because that is a great way for you to learn the material. I found in my professional career that the best way to learn something is to teach something. So I ask that you find the courage within you to sign up for a chapter, even if it's something you're not familiar with or you may not really know very well. It's a great, great learning opportunity and a great opportunity to practice your ability to teach others about R. So I'll leave you to kind of look at that. If nobody signs up for a specific chapter as a facilitator, it defaults to me. So obviously today, because I, there was nobody that could sign up or nobody knew about it, I am leading today and that just makes sense. But it will give you the opportunity to kind of look at that. So take a look at that, review it. If you see anything that you want, put your name down. Um, if you need help accessing this, this document, just let me know. I'll be more than happy to walk you through that. Uh, so we're back to the book. Uh, some other things. Um, yeah, so it kind of gives you what the presentation is, what we're expecting of it. We'll review the material. We'll ask questions, ask and answer questions. Maybe some live demo. Uh, if you're welcome or open to doing some live coding, I'm happy to do that. Um, other people will be open to do that as well. You can also get more information about this specific book club in the GitHub repo. Uh, we do understand that a lot of individuals who are coming to this space or this community probably aren't familiar with GitHub. Um, we'll probably talk a little bit more about what this service is and how we use this. But all of these shared slides that we have created for this or have been created by other cohorts, the previous 10 before us, have been tracked and are available via a service called GitHub. Um, GitHub and Git is a set of tools that do take a little bit of practice to get used to and using. But if you're someone that's interested in, in working or being a part of data science, data analytics, something like that, you'll more than likely be introduced to Git somewhere. So it's a good tool to probably start learning. And this is a great opportunity to practice using Git with these materials. Um, it's not expected because we understand that a lot of people are beginners in this or are probably beginners. And if that's so, I'm more than happy to set up a separate time to kind of show you what this looks like. We have documentation to help out to kind of show you what this looks like and how to use it. Um, but I guess the gist of this is, all these materials are freely available. All the slides that I'm going to share with you are available. If you decide to take on a chapter, more than likely there are slides that are already created for you and you just have to access them online and just talk about them. And I do have to say the slides for today were made and I was very happy because I didn't have to do a lot of extra work other than read the chapter and review them. So thank you previous cohort members. Uh, I do also want to mention that there is a, um, I do also want to mention that these sessions are recorded and post session, I think maybe a day or two days afterwards will become available on the data science learning community uh, YouTube channel. Um, the reason why that they do this is because um, they want to make them available for people that may be following along with the book but may not necessarily uh, have the opportunity to join in at this time. I want to reference this for two reasons. Uh, first reason, just to know that these sessions are recorded and they're going to be made publicly available. So obviously be aware of that if you decide to give a presentation. Uh, be aware of the things that you're sharing. Um, be aware that if you are using like a work machine to attend these things and you're giving a presentation, just be aware of what you're sharing during that. Uh, presentation. Uh, it's not that we can't go back and edit them. We certainly can, um, but just it's better to catch it and be aware of it at the start that these are recorded and they'll be made available on YouTube in about a day or two. And so it's just good for yourself if you want to give a presentation. 
or to participate just to know that what you're sharing is being recorded. And so um, just be aware of that. So the pace of this, we're gonna try and get through a chapter a week. It is okay, and I'm sorry if this is too small, but let me bump this up for you here a little bit so people can see it. Um, it's okay, we might split up overwhelming chapters. Like there are some chapters in here that are really long and we will have to take multiple weeks to cover them. And so we will do that. If there are short chapters, we might decide to combine them. Really the short, uh, the short explanation of this is we have total flexibility of the schedule within this group. Although um, the community suggests this kind of pace one chapter a week, we are not completely beholden to that. And so we as a group can decide, hey, we need more time with the subject or uh, we really don't care about the subject. Let's just cover the most important points and add a chapter. But we as a community or we as a group need to decide um, before we make any major changes of that. But we're gonna try and get through one chapter a week. I do want to say that we are going to meet every week. It has been my experience with these groups to be successful and to hold each other accountable to actually get through the book is we have to meet every week, right? Um, even, even if we don't have a presenter or even if uh, people aren't available or you know something happens and somebody has to drop out last minute, we'll usually have the meeting and I will try and commit to you as much as possible um, obviously life happens and I can't make promises a hundred percent, but I will make sure that I prioritize that I'm here every week so we can at least have a discussion. Even if we don't have um, slides ready or anything like that, or somebody's not ready, we're at least going to have a discussion. I do want to emphasize that I have found in these groups, the ones that are successful and get through groups are the ones that commit today to say, I'm going to try my best to be here every week. Obviously, because this book goes a long time, holidays, you know, we'll, we'll skip holidays. Um, if anybody has any issues or anything, just let me know. Or if anybody's like, Hey, this holiday's coming up, maybe we should skip a week. Let me know. We could talk about it as a group and we can decide, but I can say success is dependent on us being here and actually discussing and holding each other accountable to say like, yes, we're going to just, we're going to at least discuss this chapter. So before I move on to talking about learning objectives, I want to open it up to the group here for what questions you might have from what I've kind of talked about. I'm happy to answer questions via the chat. You can unmute yourself, um, turn on your camera and ask questions, but I want to give some space for people to ask any questions at this point. Colin, I've got a quick question. Sure. Um, is this, uh, is this um, as we go through the book, it, in the past, has it tended to be more theoretical and conceptual or, or more hands-on, or does it vary depending on the cohort? That's a great question. Um, this is very hands-on. Uh, at least, I haven't read the second edition, so that's why I've kind of committed to this. So there might be more kind of theory stuff in it, but I guess I would also ask what kind of theory are you talking? Are you talking about like statistical theory? Are you talking about like computer science theory? Or more just like conceptual, like, oh, how are these, how are these functions supposed to work? What's a good approach? To, like what, what, what are good data science approaches according to this book? Or is it more like, oh, this, these are functions we can use. These are tools that, that Hadley refers to that we can use in data science and let's use them now. Yeah, that's a great, great question. I think it's a mixed bag, really. I think, I guess the best way to put it and like the welcome kind of suggests is like, this gives you a perspective of like starting with some of the foundational things from like importing data, wrangling data, a little bit of modeling, visualizing and communicating. And it's gonna give you a tool set to be able to effectively work in that kind of workflow. Um, there might be like a little bit of conceptual stuff because it does talk mostly about the tidyverse. I know there's a base R discussion and, and I might be getting too in depth of it, but it's mostly gonna talk about tidyverse stuff. It's mostly gonna talk about the tools, um, the tools that are available within the tidyverse packages that you can use for certain data science things that you need to do. Um, but if you're more interested in like function design and how to create functions and how to create packages and stuff like that, I would probably suggest, if you're looking for more advanced stuff like that, I would probably think about a book club like Advanced R or our packages. But um, did that answer your question, Jackson? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. 
Um, I do, I do highly suggest to everybody, if you take a chance, um, go through and look through here, just kind of look through the chapters, like skim through them, like just look chapter by chapter and, and see if this is something that's for you. Um, absolutely. Uh, and like I said, I've been using R for probably seven, eight years now. And I was reading the first couple chapters to get, be ahead and I'm still learning stuff. So even if you're, I don't really consider myself an expert in R by any means, but, um, you'll always learn something is what I've kind of put to this. Uh, I'll answer one more question here. Um, how, how much statistics does one need to know to effectively follow through the book? I think if you have just a, a foundational understanding, I don't think you need advanced statistics for this. I will probably say that this is probably going to be more focused on um, some very foundational statistics things. I think, you know, being able to understand how to aggregate data, um, you know, stuff like average means, median, stuff like that. I think you will be fine. I don't think you need an advanced understanding of statistics to get something from this book. Um, yeah, excellent. Uh, another question, Milo. Milo, is that right? Yes. Um, hi, everyone. And hi, Colin. Thank you so much for hosting this. I just had a quick, like, more etiquette question um, sure. because I don't want to be disruptive to meetings, but I also want to commit, um, like you're saying, is really important. And I love, like, also how strong, like, how many participants we have. Um, so I think this might be relevant to other people as well. But um, I'm also committed to the weekly data science um, hangout community, which ends right at one. And usually they're very good about ending at one. So I just kind of wanted to, um, I, I might be written down somewhere, but I couldn't find it what the protocol is for like trickling in like a minute or two late sometimes and what you think about that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, this is, uh, I mean, I want to respect people's time. So if you have like a meeting that makes you be 15, 30 minutes late, Hey, that's fine. You still that's want okay. us to join? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. I, right. you know, even if you got 15 minutes to sit in, like, yeah, definitely do that. Or if you find yourself like, I just got too much on my plate this week and you don't want to show up. I, I I'm not, you know, I'm not taking okay. attendance to this. This is for you. The obviously only thing... if, Go if I ever, yeah, obviously if I ever um, felt uh, the, you know, push to sign up to uh, share a week, then I would, I would not be late, but you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. If you do commit, and like, I understand life happens, you know, I will reach out to you. Like, I will reach out to you as we get closer and closer, because I want to make sure to catch like, you know, I get it, life happens, life's going to happen to me. And so it's just more about communication, about like, hey, Colin, I don't know if I'm going to make it this week. That's great, because that's going to give me time to prepare for it. And this is really nice, because all most of the slides are already prepared. So you don't have to do a lot of prep work. Um, so it's just more about giving somebody a heads up to be like, can you review the slides and go over it is kind of the thing. Uh, I, I do, I do. Yeah. Excellent. I do have one other etiquette thing that I forgot to cover. Um, I will end this at one o'clock. Uh, we, I will very rarely go over. Um, if I do decide to go over, we won't talk about content. It will mostly be opening it up to discussion. And I just want to be fair to other people because we got work we have responsibilities that we have to take care of. So right at one is the cutoff. And I usually will do that with people who are presenting to be like, hey, we got five minutes left. We got to cut it off at, at one o'clock central time because I know we've got some other people from other times. So it is that one block. So after an hour, we'll be cut off. So, um, but excellent. That's a great question. Thank you for the reminder. Okay. Yeah, life happens. And, you know, like this isn't a class or anything. If you got to miss a couple of weeks, that's great. And that's the other benefit of the YouTube videos as well is, is they're available. So if you miss them, you can catch up. So, but I do have to say, if you can commit to it, and this is something that you really, really want to commit to, the best thing is making a commitment to yourself to say, I'm going to try and be here every week as much as possible. So, uh, okay, so we'll talk about learning objectives here. So we try, we've tried to do this for every single chapter. We try to identify some of the major things that we need to get out of each chapter. Um, these are great for retention, and they're also great to assess yourself. Okay, am I getting out what I need from this specific chapter? So most of these chapters already have learning objectives that have been identified, but that's something that we'll do for every single chapter. Thing is, this is a this is an iterative group. These are iterative pieces of information. So these will likely change or need to be refined. So don't feel like these are set in stone. 
you can absolutely change them if you need to, okay? So today, what I really wanted to do, and we've already kind of checked a couple of these off the box, is I want to kind of explain how our weekly meetings work, which I've already done. Uh, I kind of showed you the um, sign-up sheet for people to kind of look at and, and get into. If somebody wants to take next week, you're more than welcome to do that. Uh, it's going to default to me, which if nobody does, I'll, I'll look at it. But that was one objective for today. Um, I kind of showed you some stuff about editing notes on GitHub, showed you where that was at. I don't know if I'm necessarily going to show you how to do that, but I do have a resource of a video from a previous cohort that will kind of walk you through that process if you're unfamiliar with Git, GitHub and how to edit files that are available open source. And we'll have some more learning objectives as we get to chapter one. So GitHub, uh, this was not my statement, but this was a statement from a previous cohort. Uh, Git and GitHub can seem very intimidating at the start. Uh, I will tell you, I will probably say I learned Git and GitHub from participating within these groups. Um, being able to make edits on materials, learning how to do, um, learning how to do, you know, Git status, Git commit, Git push, doing pull requests, doing pull merges and everything, all that stuff started from being in these groups. And so this is a great place to practice. Um, even tech bros can figure it out. You'll be fine. We're not dealing with something that's in production here. If you make a mistake by accident, we're not going to break anything. Um, the world's not going to end if we have a merge conflict and we can't figure it out. So I do emphasize to try, at least try, um, because it is an important tool that is in the data science or in the data science profession. And you will more than likely come across it. And this is a great opportunity to learn and practice. If you're unfamiliar with it, that's fine too. I would be happy to kind of talk more about it one-on-one -on -one with you to kind of show you how that's going to work. Um, but I do want to emphasize that cohort nine has an entire YouTube video that they did in week one that will walk you through what GitHub Git is, what GitHub is, and how to actually do some of the things to edit those materials. So I highly, highly suggest watching it if you get a chance. And it is totally cool to edit directly in the browser. And for those who are familiar with GitHub, if you go to the materials that are available and you hit on your key or you hit on your keyboard the period, it will actually open up for you a web editor that you can make edits in your browser if you would like. So if you don't have like our studio set up or a different ID like VS Code or Positron and you just want to kind of play around with the materials, you can do this in here uh, if you want to. That's an option, but okay. So yeah, that's just a keyboard period and then it will open up. Thank you, uh, Dewey, for putting the URL in the chat for us there. That's awesome. Okay. So I'm going to give one more opportunity here. What other questions do people have about how these book clubs are going to run? Uh, any what other questions do you have about the materials uh, or just questions in general? I'll open it up to the group. Yes, Amber. So Amber asks, that will only save if we push changes. That is that right? I think that is correct. Um, I don't really use the web editor, so I'd have to kind of play around with this a little bit. Um, I didn't want to get too deep into this, but the best thing to do would be to fork it to fork this into your own repo, open the web editor and change it. But I didn't want to go down that path today for people that aren't unfamiliar with it. But if this is something you want to talk about one-on-one, -on -one, how to do this, absolutely let me know. Um, but again, there's some stop gaps in here that John the Geek and others have built into this that if you do make changes, they have to review it before they accept them. So you really can't break anything without a review. Uh, and I'm going to say this to John in the future. Hopefully that's true, John. <laughs> I think it is. Excellent question. What other questions do people have? And again, don't be afraid. Oh, yep. Uh, Dewey, question. Yeah, I uh, <clears throat> just wanted to sort of get your recommendation on prep work we should do before the session. Right. Do you recommend that we read through the chapter ourselves, that we go through the exercises, create a project? You know, what kind of things would you recommend? I imagine there's a lot of things we can do before the actual session to come 
prepared and contribute, but just wanted to see what your recommendation was for that. Yeah, I mean, it's a balance of time, right? So I would say bare minimum, read the chapter. That's bare minimum. Uh, if you have the opportunity to try out some of the functions, try them out. If you can even go as far as answering some of the questions, do it. Um, the questions are, some of the questions are really tricky and I haven't answered all of them. And in fact, if you do some of the exercises that are in the chapters, there is, let me find it here. Preference welcome. There is a solutions guide that is available. So there's a suggested solutions guide. So if you do decide to go through them, um, what you can do is if you decide to get to the exercises and you're having trouble or it's taking too long, they do have suggested solutions to them as well. So if you can get as far as doing the exercises, highly suggest that that, but at the bare minimum, read the chapter beforehand uh, is my suggestion. So. All right. Great. Thanks. And um, the more you do, the more you're going to learn. So uh, <laughs> I actually, and that is a good point. I do want to reemphasize again, like what's another thing to get prepped and to learn this material? Uh, be a presenter because being a presenter is a great way to learn this and get prepared. Um, and so that's another way is sign up to be a presenter. That's a great way to also prepare yourself for each session. So intent, wink, wink, sign up for those sessions. All right, cool. Well, if there's no other questions, I think we'll kind of start diving in here into chapter one. Um, I just kind of want to highlight some of the learning objectives. Again, these are things that you should get out of today's session or what you should have gotten out of this kind of first introductory chapter. And so by the end of this, you should be able to describe what does a typical data science project look like? Uh, also explain the reasoning behind the order of content in this book. Recognize some topics that are not covered by this book. Uh, set up an environment in which you can learn the topics of this book and describe how code in the book differs from code in your console. So first thing I do want to highlight is, um, and to kind of emphasize, I'm not a data scientist. Um, I'm not a full-blown statistician. So um, some of the stuff that gets talked about in regards to data science, I've done data science things, I've done data science projects, but that's not my official title. I say that for two reasons. One, because I want to emphasize that I will get things wrong and others will too, and that is okay. This is a learning space and I want to make it welcome to people to be wrong and to be able to ask questions that people have. If you do have questions, um, ask them. Uh, if you're sitting back and you're saying, I don't know if I want to ask this question, ask it because if you have that question, more likely than not, someone else has that question as well. And we want to make sure that we answer those questions. I will say where I've learned the most is when somebody asks a question and says, I don't know how this exactly works. And that's where I've learned a lot. In addition to that, I do want to mention as well is I kind of go with the saying, uh, none of us is as smart as all of us. All of us have specific experiences. All of us have different backgrounds that can contribute to this learning community to make this an effective session. And so if you have a comment or you have a different way of looking at things, please let it be known whether in the chat or raising your hand and, and jumping in, okay? All right, so let's get started here. So the book kind of talks about this idea of a typical data science project. And so what the book is kind of setting up for us is what does that kind of typical workflow look like? And again, I'm gonna emphasize typical because this is context specific. This is project specific. There may be certain things that you have to do outside of this kind of more general model. But usually when people ask me, what do I do? Or what are, the, what are some, of the, some of the things I use? I usually point them to this model. And really it kind of comes down to this idea of importing and tidying data, which is wrapped up into this concept of wrangling data. Uh, understanding the cycle of transforming, visualizing, and modeling data, and then the output being the actual communication part of it. How do we actually take the analysis that we've done or the things that we've done in our project and communicate it to others, whether that be in our organization, the wider public, so on and so forth. In addition to this, the model talks about this idea of a program or programming. This idea is programming and aids the entire process. So it talks about using code to automate common tasks, trying to solve newer problems or using code to help us solve new problems with greater ease. 
So being able to use a programming language like R to do analysis is allowing us to do those things. So when it comes to this idea of importing data, this could be data from any type of source, right? It could come from a file, like a CSV file, TSV file, Parquet file, so on and so forth. It could be directly from a database, right? You could have a database connection to a SQL database, Postgres database, so on and so forth. A specific web app, whether you're trying to interact with some type of API. But in this step, what we're trying to do is we're trying to move data from those formats into R so we can actually do the analysis and use the tools that are available to us. And really, you put it like this way, importing is a really important step because you can't data science, data science it until it's in R, right? And I will say when I first learned R going back eight years, eight, nine years ago, that was the hardest step was just figuring out how do I get data into R? And so there will be a little bit of time spent in the book talking a little bit about trying to do that. And so I'm just gonna highlight again, I think somebody just came off mute. If you wouldn't mind checking your mute, that would be good so we can um, make sure that we eliminate some of those background noises. So let's see. Okay, cool. All right, thank you. So we're gonna talk about those tools. The next step in this process is wrangling data. Um, I will say people go back to that old 80-20 rule. Um, I know AI is, and AI tools are making this maybe more 70-30 now or maybe even 60-40, but it's still a good chunk of the work that we do. And so R and spe specifically tools and packages within the tidyverse really give you a, a set of functions and ways of doing things to help you wrangle your data, to get it into a format necessary for you to do your analysis. And so really it's about trying to get your data into what's called tidy data. It's making your data usable um, so that you can actually do what you want to do. Now there's an, there's an academic paper out there and I'll probably share this afterwards that Hadley Wickham, one of the authors of this book, and many of you have probably come across the name Hadley Wickham if you're searching anything related to R. He wrote a paper called um, this tidy data paper. It's an academic paper that talks about this. We have an entire chapter number five that talks about this concept. So someone did ask earlier if we're gonna get into some of the theoretical stuff. That is kind of a theoretical chapter about what structure does our data need to be to actually do the things we want to do in R. Really tidy data in, in, in a really boiled down sense is just columns and rows. Really trying to get our columns, which represent variables, rows representing observations. and I'm not going to dig too much in this because we have an entire chapter about this and I'll point you to an academic paper to talk about it. But really that's what it boils down to is when we have a data set, we're going to try and wrangle it into columns representing variables. If you're coming from more of the machine learning space features um, and rows being observations. Transform is further refinement. It's that filter, mutate, summarize, maybe even uh, some are group by summarize. I think I would add group by to this because I do a lot of group by's. These are verbs that you will likely do a lot within data analysis or data science. You will usually filter your data, narrow it, mutate it, create new columns or new variables, or summarize it in some way by grouping it by some other variable. It's very common. I mean, I have some work that I have to do this afternoon and I will guarantee you, I will probably do some type of filter, mutate or summarize. And so the sooner you kind of take into take those verbs in and understand those verbs, you can start understanding, okay, what tools do I need to use in the tidyverse or R to achieve those goals of transforming my data? So filter, mutate, summarize, good way to remember this. Um, and we'll talk more about this extensively throughout the book. I'm gonna talk about one more concept and I'll open it up for questions here real quick, but the book also kind of goes a little bit talking about understanding and communicating um, the data science process. The first thing is visualization, right? We need to be good at not only doing, uh, wrangling our data and doing some analysis of it, but we also need to find ways to put it into a format that other people who may not be necessarily familiar with R or data analysis to understand what we're actually doing. This comes with good data visualization, right? Because good data visualization can help us find things that are unexpected um, and they also may help raise additional new questions that might be interesting to us. 
this book does a little bit about this, but there's an additional book called the ggplot2 book, which is a tidyverse package that allows you to create data visualizations. If you're interested in going in depth on this topic, I highly suggest reading this book. In addition to this, there's modeling, where we're trying to extract patterns from data. Unfortunately, that's not covered in depth in this book. Uh, I think we'll talk a little bit about linear regression later on in the book. But if you're somebody who's here wanting to learn more about machine learning uh, or wants to learn more about like deep neural networks or something like that, this is not the place for you. Um, I would rather point you to a book called Tidy Modeling with R. That's going to give you more of kind of that machine learning um, modeling kind of background. We'll talk a little bit about it. And like I said, I think as far as we'll get is linear regression. Uh, don't quote me on that because I haven't read the second edition, but I think that's as far as we'll get. And then the last part is communicating. So it's the critical part of data science. Uh, it doesn't matter how good your analysis is, is if you can't emphasize it or if you can't share it with other people, it doesn't really matter. The best way that I kind of put it is if your analysis just sits in a vacuum or it just sits on your computer, it has no value. Even if you even, and this is just my opinion, I, um, even if you just let it there, you could be the smartest person who've done this amazing analysis. If you're unavailable to share it and to give that information to another person, it doesn't really mean anything. And so it's really critical to kind of learn these skills because it's going to be very, very important for you to get buy-in from your stakeholders from the analysis that you do. Um, and then also to this book emphasizes the use of Quarto. Uh, previously, it was our markdown. Quarto is one of the newer kind of technical um, publishing platforms that the Tidyverse team is embracing and a lot of people are embracing. If you're unfamiliar with Quarto, I highly point you to read these docs, but we will talk more about this later. I've transitioned most of my work into using Quarto. It's pretty straightforward if you're somebody coming from our markdown, um, but I think it provides some flexibility, uh, more flexibility. Uh, I know that's kind of a I step on that statement lightly, but um, I do view it as a little bit more flexible than our markdown, but um, happy for other people to jump in about that. But this book will mostly focus on Quarto rather than our markdown. So this is a great moment for me to kind of take a break and take a sip of water here. What questions do people have about this typical data science project workflow? Question here, how many people are familiar with this type of workflow? And you can just say I yes. Would like, or... Hello, oh, go ahead. I'd like to, to share some uh, thoughts. I have been doing uh, modeling uh, like for several years. And for me, visualization and modeling, they kind of iterate between each other, you know, because you first do exploratory data and visualization, then you need to try many things to how to visualize better your your model so it's a kind of iterative thing and uh, the communication it's a really i think that's something some skills we uh, really need to to develop because i mean i have been a scientist and it's I think the communicating part is you know, basically making complete sense of what we are doing that's a challenging aspect, I would say, the most challenging aspect. But uh, I feel quite uh, interesting these iterative processes we always do between visualization and, and modeling. Yeah, excellent, excellent, excellent thoughts. Excellent, um, excellent addition to what we've been kind of talking about. Can, um, can I get your first name? I think, is it a, is it a lion? It's Daniel. It... No, no, no. Daniel. Okay. <laughs> Daniel, I'll say. Daniel, nice to, nice Daniel. to meet you. It's, it's yeah. great for, great for you jumping in. And then, yeah. And, and something that I want to emphasize too is, you know, this isn't a perfect model as well, right? This isn't a perfect model. And the other thing to emphasize too, is this book's not going to cover everything too. And mm -hmm. like you said, one of the hardest concepts that we have to kind of understand is like, how do we communicate this information? This book is only going to give you the starting point. And so, you know, I, I want to give you all the answers to that, but this book won't do that, but it will give you at least a good foundational step to doing it. So I appreciate you jumping in, Daniel. Thank you. Uh, what Thank other you comments guys. or questions do people have? Yeah. 
some people are already saying they're just getting started, which is great. I, I'm glad. I'm glad to have some of the the newer newer people. Hopefully, you'll kind of learn this kind of model. And then some other people said they're kind of familiar with it. So that's that's excellent. Great. Okay, so we got understand, understand and communicate. Let's go to the order of the content of the book. So this is how the book is generally structured. We'll start with import and tidy, right? <clears throat> um, but what's really nice about this book and how Hadley kind of approaches his book, his books and how he writes his books um, is he really gets you started with creating something right away. Um, this book will really start with visualization. So if you're sitting there saying, well, I just want to go linearly, like I just want to start with a very basic foundation stuff and then go from there and like build up from there. No, this book jumps right in and it's like, we're going to get you creating stuff right away. And that's what I really appreciate about this book is it really gets you started with like creating something. Then we get into wrangling. Um, yes, it's not the fun part of the job. I mean, I guess fun is dependent on the person. I find it fun sometimes. Um, Sometimes it's very aggravating, but it's a good place to, to get started because you have to get your data into a format to actually do the analysis that you need to do. So we have to spend some time talking about it, talk about the tools that are available us to perform those tasks. The next is talking about programming. So this is helping simplify other steps. So I think we will have a topic on generating like functions. Um, Yes, we will. So functions, functional programming, such as iteration, and talking a little bit about base R. And, and I don't want to get into the differences between base and, and, and tidyverse. Um, we'll talk a little bit about that as we get further on. But the book will kind of talk more about those like programming concepts. Uh, each chapter has an example for you to kind of anchor to, right? So we may be talking about a topic. You're like, well, why does this really matter? What's really nice of how these chapters are written by the authors is, is that they really start with a motivating example to anchor you to it, to show you, okay, this is important because this will allow you to do this, right? And then we have the exercises. Um, <clears throat> we can discuss this a little bit. Uh, I will pose this to the group um, and we can add this to the chat or people can jump in. I know we have like 20 people here. Um, what do y'all want? Is this a group that more wants to kind of just go through the material, talk about it and discuss the material? Or do we want to spend more time walking through some of the exercises? What do you think? And you can add uh, your suggestion in the chat. You can jump in. I just kind of want to know where the group's coming from and what they think. <clears throat> exercises for sure. The Perlis is that. Dewey, hands-on working of problems is always the best way to learn for me. Absolutely. <clears throat> Excellent. I think we can walk through some exercises. Yep, I think that's good. I'm okay with being up to the presenter. I think that's a good idea, Milo. I think that's excellent. I'd rather discuss the material and the exercises, but not necessarily walk through them in the hour. Okay. I prefer to do the exercises together. Okay, Austin. Okay. And we can kind of work through this. And, and the way I've done this in the past is, um, and we can talk more about it in, in Slack or, or whatever. I think I'm going to put it on on the presenter to decide. Um, because there are some exercises that are, are pretty straightforward. And they're like, eh, we don't have to go these line by line. But there might be some ones that you might do that would be an excellent example of a specific concept. Um, so I think for now, let's just default to the presenter deciding what that may be. Um, and then if we want to dig further, we always have the Slack channel to do it asynchronously and to ask questions like, hey, I'm working on this exercise. I don't know what's going on. I don't understand the solution. Somebody will jump in and help. So for now, that's the decision that we'll make, but we can go a little bit further, modify that if we need to. So, so I just spent a lot of time talking about what is in this book. Let's take a moment to talk about what this book does not cover. Uh, this book does not talk about modeling in depth, right? Yes, modeling is super important for data science, but it's not really big for this book. And in fact, I've kind of already referenced this, or yep, I've already kind of referenced this book before. It's Tidy Modeling with R by Max Kuhn or uh, Julia Silge. There are book clubs, I think. I don't know if they're running one right now for Tidy Modeling for R, but <clears throat> again, if you're somebody that's coming here saying, I really want to learn about machine learning, I really want to learn about advanced modeling, 
this might not be the group for you. And I highly suggest to maybe go check those out. I want you to stay because I think this is a fun group and a great place to learn. But at the same time, if you are, if your goal is to learn more advanced modeling, I'm going to push you to those groups. <clears throat> In addition to this, this is not a book about big data. Um, big data is problem specific. It's context specific. So it's really hard to kind of talk about those specific things in these chapters. Um, if you work with big data, you might want to learn other tools. Um, there's Sparkler, which builds on some of the principles in this book. I think we will talk a little bit about, <clears throat> excuse me, Arrow a little bit. And I think we'll also talk a little bit about, um, I don't know if we'll talk about DuckDB or not in here, but we might. But if you're somebody here who's managing big data systems or doing analysis on big data, this might not be the place for you. So um, again, I want you to stay here because you'll learn something. But again, if that's your main goal of what you want to learn, this might not be the best place to learn that. And then other programming languages. Um, obviously, there are awesome tools that are out there in other programming languages like Python, Julia, et cetera. Um, uh, we're not going to talk about those here. This is an R focused book. Um, one suggestion that I have and that the community has is if you're somebody that's coming at this new is find what works for you or find what is being used within your uh, profession and master that one tool, master that one tool. And then once you've kind of mastered that, expand your experience a little bit um, instead of jumping back and forth. And again, that's an opinion. Um, it's not a fact, but it is suggested that it is suggested that master one tool that you find to work for you, that your professional organizations that you're a part of work with, and master that tool, and then maybe expand out later. Like I said, there there are great tools across programming languages and um, that are available, but for this specific thing, we will be talking mainly about R. I'll talk about, uh, we're about at the five minute mark. So let's just cover, let's cover the prerequisites. I'll open it up for final questions and then we can cover the rest of these next week because most of these are really, really quick. Um, so somebody did ask earlier, what are some of the prerequisites for this, this book? Uh, numeric literacy, right? If you can do some basic arithmetic and have some basic understanding of data, you'll be fine in this group. Like if you just have some basic numeric literacy, you're doing good. It's good to have some basic programming skills, but it's okay if you're completely brand new. Um, in fact, that is okay. I do say if you are somebody that's coming at this and have no experience programming, you might also check out this book called Hands-On Programming um, by Garrett Groleman. It's a great co-requisite for this book. Um, I highly point you to that. But again, I want you to stay. So if you're somebody saying, I've never opened up our studio before, that's great. I want you to be here because you're going to learn something. Um, you're also going to have to take some time to download both R and R Studio. So one of the first kind of concepts to learn is that R is separate from R Studio. R is the actual programming language itself. And you will get R from this thing called CRAN, which is the Comprehensive R Archive Network. And so you can access this, it's linked here. You can type in CRAN on Google and it'll open it up too. Uh, it does look like an older site from like 1995. So don't let that be off-putting to you. Like this is R, it does look a little bit older of a site, but this is where you actually can download um, R for your computer, okay? It's available for different distributions or for different operating systems. So you can use Linux, Mac OS, or Windows. Choose your flavor for your operating system. Um, you just download it. It will walk you through a download um, process and you will have it available to you. You will first need to download R first and then you will have to download R Studio. Okay. R Studio is known as um, an IDE or an integrated or integrated development environment. Um, there are others. Um, in fact, the company that um, has made R Studio available has come out with a new IDE called Positron. And there is VS Code. There's all kinds of them. There's Vim, NVim, all kinds of them that are out there. But I do want to emphasize that this one, we're mainly going to focus on R Studio. Um, 
I highly suggest if you are presenting to present using our studio so there's less confusion for people that are new and starting so we don't get into um, the confusion of which IDE are you using. So anytime that I present or the expectation of somebody else is presenting, I would ask to please you with our studio if you can. If you're not familiar with it, that's fine. Um, we'll make do. But if, yep, so you can download our studio. You just click on this link. You can type in our studio in Google. You just install it. And in fact, they're very clear of like, hey, install our first and then install our studio. Um, it's pretty aware of what operating system you're working on. So this should be available for whatever you need. And once you do that, our studio will become available and it won't exactly look like this. It will be in a lighter color. I'm a dark mode person, so mine looks darker. If you do download it, it's gonna be white and the organization might be a little bit different, but it generally looks like this, okay? Um, and then in addition to that, if you need help and you're not familiar with those, what that looks like, uh, Posit puts out a cheat sheet for our studio. This is available as well. They're great about cheat sheets. This will give you a cheat sheet that talks about like all of the different components of it. Now this at first glance is going to be really intimidating for new people. Um, don't worry. I will tell you, we probably won't cover 75% of what's in here. Um, but if you're somebody who wants to know every um, functionality of your IDE, and you're using our studio, this is a good starting point reference to kind of learn all of those things, okay? So for next time, I highly suggest to take an opportunity to download our, to download our studio and maybe play around with it, okay? If you have trouble with it, I'm more than happy to help you. Um, I can probably stay for a little bit today afterwards. If not, I'm more than happy to, for you to reach out onto me in the Slack and be like, hey, Colin, can you jump on a Zoom call to help me out? Happy to do that if needed, okay? And we are at the 59 mark. So that's all I'm gonna cover for today. I will hang out here for a little bit more if people wanna kind of discuss or have additional questions or comments. But other than that, I just wanna say, I really appreciate everybody joining in. I look forward to the kickoff of this group. This is one of my favorite things about this community is the ability to share information and discuss topics. And so I look forward to working with you throughout this book. So other than that, have a good rest of your day. And then, like I said, if people want to kind of hang out for a little bit, I can hang for a couple minutes and then we'll talk later.